Alright, Kipsters, as you can see on the screen, if you are on the second classwork called Spring Break Classwork Number 2, Area of Triangles, this is the video for you. You should have already finished Classwork Number 1, Area of Parallelograms, before starting this video. So if you didn't do that one, go back and do Classwork Number 1 first, okay? Uh, as you can see, the aim. We're going to accurately calculate the area of triangles. Uh, and our facts are actually two facts you should have seen before. So I'm going to read through them, and I do expect that you'd be able to fill in these blanks uh, without me. So it says area is the amount of blank units it takes to cover the inside of a flat or plain figure. It's always measured in square units or units squared. Go ahead and call out what word should go in that blank. Yep, if you said square, you are correct. Fact number two, the area of any blank can all be calculated with the same formula, area equals base times height, or area equals length times width. The height or width is the vertical distance from the chosen base to its opposite side. Go ahead and call out what word should go in that blank. Go ahead, call it out. If you said parallelogram, you were right. So those are just reviews from uh, the prior classwork, because today... Uh, or in this video, we are not doing parallelograms anymore. We're doing triangles. But knowing the area of a parallelogram is going to help us figure out the area of a triangle. Okay? So, if, if you look below your facts on that sheet of paper, you're going to see these two guided practice problems. Guided, guided practice problem A should not be terribly difficult for you because that's a parallelogram, also known as a rectangle. Okay? What is the area of the rectangle shown to the left? Uh, the formula for the area of a rectangle is what? Go ahead, call it out. Yeah, if you said area equals base times height, I would like for you to write that down underneath that part of the question. And now we're just going to plug in like we've done before in the prior classwork. So we rewrite area equals. And then why don't you go ahead and call out what our base is. And hopefully you included the units. It's 10 inches. And then we're going to multiply that by the height, which is what? Go ahead. Four inches is correct. And let's not forget, when we do this multiplication, we're multiplying 10 times 4, which is 40. And then inches times inches, which makes inches squared or square inches. So the area of this rectangle here is 40 square inches. Okay? That's why I put it on the inside over there. Now comes a new part, the triangle shown below here. And I hope you notice something really uh, important and done on purpose. The height of this triangle is the same exact height as this rectangle above. And the base of this rectangle is the same as the triangle above. So I'm wondering if you think you know, without even knowing the area of a triangle, what you think the area of this triangle might be. Go ahead and call it out. See if you know. All right, and if you're not confident with that answer, I'm going to show you something up here. So take a look up here at this rectangle and watch me make a diagonal chop. Whoop, whoop, like that. Now, come back down here. That is the area of this triangle here. I hope you see that if I take this area and put it up there, that is exactly half of this, tri of this rectangle. So if this rectangle, the whole thing's area is 40 square square inches, what do you think the area of the shaded in blue triangle would be? If you said 20 square inches, you would be right. And without even knowing it, you've developed the, the formula for the area of a triangle. It's basically, you take the area of the rectangle, base times height, and you cut it in half, or you take half of it. So everyone, take a look underneath where it says, what is the area of the triangle? I don't have a problem if you put the answer in now. You know it's 20 square inches, but I do want you to write down, step by step, what the formula is. And that's one way that it looks. In fact, it's going to be on your reference sheet on the state exam. It will look exactly like this. It says area equals half base times height. 
remembering that if there's no sign in here, it's assumed to be multiplication. So it's one half times the base times the height, which is the same thing as saying taking the base, multiply by the height, and then dividing by two. Okay? So area equals half base times height. Next step, let's start plugging it in. The area equals one half times the base. So what is the base of our triangle? Go ahead and call it out. Yes, and it is 10 inches. Please put in the units as well. Let's keep that in mind, okay? Uh, what about the height? Go ahead and call that out. Yes, that's four inches. I'm gonna give you all a second to copy that down. So it's one half times 10 inches times four inches. We're almost done. Uh, now, we're just going to do 1 half times 10. In the order of operations, if you have multiplication and multiplication, it honestly doesn't matter which one you do first because they're all multiplication, but I like to go by the order of operations and say from left to right. So we're taking 1 half times 10, and in order to multiply 1 half times 10, uh, we're going to make it look like that, 10 over 1. Uh, at Kip Infinity, we call that using the invisible one. And then we're going to still multiply that by four inches. Okay, I just got rid of the inches here. I know I'm going to bring it back in a second, okay? Uh, one half times 10 over one. Uh, go ahead and call that out what that would be. Yeah, if you did shoot, shoot, one times 10 is 10. Two times one is two. That would be 10 over two times four. And notice how I did it again, putting the invisible one underneath because it means the same thing as four holes, four over one. And that will give you 40 over two, which is the same as 20. Uh, 40 divided by two being 20. And once again, going back to our units, this is square inches because in our problem, we're multiplying inches times inches, okay? Most important thing here, you need to know the area of a rectangle, and that will help you find the area of any triangle. One half base times height, or base times height divided by two. I'm going to give everyone a, a, a 10 seconds or so to copy the rest of that down, just to make sure your computations are correct. All right, moving on. I think you have to flip to the next page, and I will flip to the next slide. Here we go. Fact number three, to find the area of a triangle, you blank the base and the height and then divide by blank. Okay, why don't you fill in those two blanks now? I'll give you about 15 seconds to fill it in. I know you have to know at least one of them. Come on, y'all, fill it in. All right, let's see if you are correct. To find the area of a triangle, you multiply the base and the height, and then divide by 2. This can be represented with the formula, and we talked about two formulas. The first formula is 1 half base times height, or the other one is taking the base times the height, and then dividing by 2. These both mean the same exact thing. If you take base times height, divide by 2, that's the same as taking base times height and multiplying it by a half. Okay, those are the two formulas. Again, this one on the left is the one that's going to be used and given to you in, on the reference sheet on the state test. The last problem we're going to do together is this one over here. It's another triangle, as you see. So we're going to be using our area formula of area equals one-half times base times height, or half base times height. First step, let's rewrite it. And now look for our base. So I see four numbers there with the feet unit afterwards. Can you go ahead and point to the one that is the base? Go ahead, point to it. I hope you're pointing right there. That is the base. Go ahead and write that down as the base, making sure to include your units. So one half, ten and three-fourths feet. And now comes the more interesting choice. We have three numbers left, and only one of them is the height. If you remember from our parallelogram classwork from before, the height is vertical, straight up and down. No diagonals needed, which means that the height 
is eight feet because that is the one that represents the line that is going straight up and down. So we're now going to put in eight feet over here. I'll give you a second to write that down. And now all we have to do is a little bit of math. We're going to take one half times 10 and 3 fourths feet times 8 feet. Here we go. First step, 1 half. And now we have to multiply 1 half times 10 and 3 fourths. As you probably remember from the prior classwork, we actually need to make this into an improper fraction. So what is 10 and 3 fourths as an improper fraction? Go ahead and write that down now. I'll give you about 10 seconds. If you put 43 over 4, you would be correct. Okay? 1 half times 43 over 4 times 8. Okay, I'm just getting rid of the units. You know I'm going to bring them back later because it's super important. But let's just do the multiplication and finish that up. Uh, 1 half times 43 over 4. In fact, I'm going to ask you guys to pause the tape and figure this out on your own. So take 10 seconds, pause this tape, and then figure out what you think the answer to this problem is. Okay? Pause now. All right. If you're back, you should have figured out that whole multiplication thing, including the times 8. 1 half times 43 over 4, that's going to give you 43 over 8. That's just multiplying the numerators, multiplying the denominators. Times 8, but I'm going to make it look like 8 over 1. Then I'm going to do multiplying 43 times 8 and 8 times 1. That gives me 344 over 8. And then a huge improper fraction. Uh, I shouldn't really say that. It just has a really large numerator over a smaller denominator. Uh, and that's just asking you to do division. should look like that. If you did the division, believe it or not, you should end up with a whole number. 8 goes into 3 no times. It goes into 34 4 times. 4 times 8 is what? Call it out. That's correct. You do your subtraction. Uh, I'm going to pull uh, subtract 4 minus 2 is 2. Pull down that 4. 8 goes into 24 3 times. No remainder here. Our answer is 43 square feet. And put it in your answer line over there like that. So the area of this triangle is 43 square feet using the formula 1 half base times height. Most important thing, make sure you're choosing the correct numbers. The base and then especially that height is vertically up and down. Okay? One last thing. I think you might have to flip your page over, or it could just be on the bottom. I'm not sure. Looks like that. Told you all we're going to be doing a couple of chants. This is the chant part two. Uh, hopefully you got the first four from the last classwork. I'm going to fill those in now. And I'm going to chant those first four out to you. It says perimeter is the outside add up all the sides. It's measured in units like inches, feet, and miles. Area is the inside base times height, but only for parallelograms, no matter what the type. Now here's the next two lines. And if we have a triangle, we know just what to do. We take the base and times the height and then divide by two. And there you go. Okay, that is the second part of the chant, adding a couple more lines. I'm pretty sure... Uh, during your independent practice, which is coming up, you're going to have some questions to uh, to do. And then uh, a couple of times being asked to rewrite this chant so that you can put it to memory, okay? I'll sing it to you one more time. Perimeter is the outside add up all the sides. It's measured in units like inches, feet, and miles. Area is the inside base times height, but only for parallelograms no matter what the type. And if we have a triangle, we know just what to do. We take the base and times the height and then divide by two. All right, Kipsters, thank you for listening.